beginning to look a lot like Christmas. So it's Christmas time, and I'm taking these off. Many people are probably watching movies, watching watch a lot of Christmas movies, a lot of classic movies. My favorite was always Home Alone when I was really little. Other people like like Elf, which I had to watch at school a lot. A lot of people like Christmas Story. A lot of people like this movie. The Muppets Christmas Carol is the best Christmas movie of all time. If you don't believe me, that's fine. We're gonna go through the whole movie. So you better strap in the So the movie begins with this iconic music. And the titles roll. And I'm already crying from nostalgia. <laughs> the credits start to roll. You see the landscape that looks very similar to the 2012 version of Boy Miz. And then the theatrical credits play. And it's just the Muppets. <laughs> Kermit the Frog as Bob Cratchit. Gonzo as Charles Dickens. And then Rizzo is just Rizzo. <laughs> so it's not even all Muppets. There's just, there's humans too in this movie. I mean, Scrooge just played my great and powerful Michael Caine. But they just coexist with each other in this universe of, <laughs> of Muppets. So now we're meeting our narrators. Charles Dickens, played by Gonzo, and Rizzo, the rat. And Rizzo is just, he is here for the food. So Rizzo and Charles Dickens, they're setting the scene. The, the Marleys were dead as a doornail. While I, nearly 20 years old, I'm just waiting for the great and powerful Michael Caine to walk in right about now. There he is, Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge. We are graced with the best song in this movie. One of my favorite songs in any Christmas movie ever. Say, is it getting cold around here? Hmm. And no lie, I still get <laughs> I still get chills watching Michael King like, walk along to the beat of the music. <laughs> all the Muppets just fucking rip into Ebenezer Scrooge, all culminating in taunts until he turns around with a face that would make anyone stop singing along with fucking puppets. <laughs> we are also introduced to Kermit the Frog. Despite all the all the meanage, oh my god! I still somehow start to feel like sad for this fucking frog puppet. Bob Cratchit, you know he he does what happens in the book. I think I've never read the book. And he asks for a day off, and Scrooge threatens to fire his entire staff because what a humbug! <gasps> Ow! Oh. And then his nephew comes in. And he's all, happy Christmas. And <laughs> he, he does this monologue about Christmas love that would make even, like, Santa Claus bark. Good. And I say, God bless it. Yeah. 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 And Scrooge yells as Bob Cratchit talks in a weird, creepy voice in this movie. And Scrooge finally gives in, gives his workers Christmas off. And Bob Cratchit says, there's only one more sleep till Christmas song. After all, there's only one more sleep till Christmas. So Scrooge beats off a coat rack and eats dinner. And like bells start chiming and the candles go out. And suddenly... <laughs> it's Ebenezer Scrooge! Oh. And because they're the Marleys, and they're Muppets, they start singing. We're Marley and Marley, avarice and greed. We took advantage of the poor, just ignored the needy. Also, I do want to say, Michael Caine is probably one of the best Scrooges I've ever seen. Like, the emotions that he shows as he journeys with the ghosts of past, present, and future are like, they hold up nearly three decades later. That's why it's the best. <laughs> and this Marley song 
It's probably one of the most frightening in the movie. One, because of the physical representation of, like, chains. And this weird and, like, cynical and world burning portrayal that the Marlins just give off. <laughs> Doom Scrooge, you're doomed for all time. And then even Scrooge here, like, shows, like, actual, like, where it's like, you can see that he can change, he just isn't changing. So we finally see Rizzo and Carl's chickens. Um, and like any Muppets, they, uh, they decide to break this Scrooge's house. And now, the clock strikes the hour, and we meet the first of our many ghosts that we will meet tonight. The ghost Chris past the floating body of a young girl, which is actually quite frightening to look at. They're in the past, and Scrooge finds his old schoolhouse, and his old friends, and his old self, just sitting alone in the classroom. And in the past, it makes me up. And Ebenezer sees many different versions of himself growing up in the schoolhouse, and he's still alone. So Charles Dickens kills Rizzo, and Scrooge finds his old job, and enters the Christmas party, where there are more puppets than people. There's probably only about three people, like actual people in this entire scene. The rest are just Muppets! <laughs> And we see a young adult Ebenezer Scrooge, and he's still trying to work on Christmas. And then the spirit of Christmas past shows Ebenezer one of his worst Christmases ever, where his fiance leaves him. And not only is Rizzo crying, but I'm crying. And then Ebenezer begins to cry, and we fade back into his bedroom, and he's just alone. <laughs> that's all. But that's all the, the ghost of Christmas past had to show him. No lessons learned, just sadness. Ebenezer tries to get back to sleep. Because, you know, it's not like he was told that there would be multiple ghosts at night. You will be haunted by three spirits! Haunted? I've already had enough of that. Without these visits, you cannot hope to avoid the past we did! The clock soon chimes again, and we are met with the ghost of Christmas present, Ginger Haglund. And he is gigantic, and he is stuffed up into Scrooge's den. <laughs> He shrinks down to the size of a person, knocks Dickens and Rizzo off another window ledge, and the spirit brings Ebenezer to present Christmas morning, and then they start singing another song that I still know all the words to, like a decade later. It's in the singing of a street corner choir. It's going home and getting warm by the fire. It's true wherever you find love, it feels like Christmas. Scrooge soon finds his footing. A street corner choir. It's going home and getting warm by the fire. And happiness begins to grace his face as he begins to enter the Christmas spirit. And then Ginger Hagrid takes him to his nephew's house, where they play this wonderful Christmas game. Is it? Vegetable? No. Animal then? What else? Oh. How about a dog? No. A cat. A cat? I said it first. No. Wait then, is it an unwanted creature? An unwanted creature, but not a rattleech or a cockroach? Then what? Then what? What? It's Ebenezer Scrooge! Yes! All around me are familiar faces. I always have to pause this because it makes me so sad. And it's so mean. <laughs> he's taken a Bob Cratchit's house, and we see that he's married to Miss Piggy, and Ebenezer finds Cratchit and Tiny Tim singing as they walk up to the house. It's an unsettling scene, because they gave the puppets legs, but there's like no puppets here that we can see at least. They get inside, and the children start setting a table for like Christmas dinner or whatever. And Tiny Tim has like an asthma attack and then it has to go sit down. And it's just sad. <laughs> the founder of the feast, indeed! <laughs> if I had him here, I would give him a piece of my mind to feast upon, and I bet he would choke on it. Hmm. Choke. choke! So the ghost of Christmas present like tells Scrooge like what he sees coming in the future and like what could be if Scrooge doesn't change. And then he disappears into a burst of sparkles. So Scrooge's journey, it's almost over. Even Rizzo and Charles Dickens have been in the audience until the finale. <laughs> so the ghost of Christmas Future, I'm just gonna call it, the Dementor, leads a lesson willing like Scrooge, like, through darkness, and in, they come out onto, like, a street corner, and they find a group of Muppets talking 
about the recent death of a rich man. I wonder who it could be. <laughs> so Scrooge wanders into like the spider's den, and there's like a group of like auctioneers, I guess, and they're just they're selling items from the house of the dead rich man. And Scrooge still hasn't caught on. He's assuming that like the, the Ghost of Christmas Future is telling him the story of another dead rich man, and he's taken back to Bob Cratchit's house, where it's quiet and gloomy, and Scrooge looks through the window. The entire family is just mourning. And now I too am mourning Tiny Tim. I'm crying over a tiny frog puppet. And the ghost of Christmas Future takes Scrooge back to the graveyard and he asks who the dead man was, to which he is pointed towards a gravestone. Scrooge finally starts to accept Christmas spirit and he's crying he's like the cloak of the ghost of Christmas future and he's like begging him to give him mercy. He's like, I I will keep the Christmas spirit and I will make sure to show it all the year. And he's clinging to the cloak and he's like pressing forward and he falls back into his bedroom. Dawn finally breaking through his fucking window. <laughs> So Scrooge awakes a changed man and does perhaps the funniest thing I've ever seen in this movie. Oh. So once again, Scrooge kills our narrator's opening the window and asks a young boy what the date is and tells him to buy a turkey and like tosses him a whole bunch of coins. I'll give you five shillings. What? And Scrooge puts on his Sunday best and he's walking through the street and scaring the shit out of the townspeople with good, good joy. Christmas merriment, and it still makes me feel so Christmassy because he like he walks up to Rizzo and uh, Charles Dickens and he like pats their hands and he's like Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. So one of the puppet, one of one of the Muppets, gives Scrooge a scarf, and, and he gets his turkey, and we get another musical number. With a thankful heart, with an endless joy, with a growing family, every girl and boy will be nephew and niece to me. A really mean prank on Cratchit and Miss Piggy. Bob Cratchit? And he's like pretending that like Cratchit should have been in work the whole time, even though they agreed the day before. And Miss Piggy is like rearing up to beat the shit out of Scrooge, and he's like, I'll give you a raise, and I want you to have dinner with me. And then it's all fine. So all the Muppets cram into the Cratchit house, and they're all singing their last musical number. And then the movie's over. <laughs> And it's still one of the most iconic movies of all time. <laughs> That's it. I I just really like the Muppets Christmas Carol and I wanted to share it all with you. I think you should all go watch it right now. While it's still Christmas. Sitting on the street, on a fire, it's going home again.